So, can mankind seize the forces of nature and take control of the weather? If that question sounds a bit ludicrous to you, um, it may be interesting to note that in 1974, uh, the United Nations actually banned environmental warfare. Now, why is it that you would ban something that doesn't exist or was completely impossible? At the very least, it's being seriously discussed and considered at a worldwide level. It makes me wonder what kind of environmental warfare was already going on in the 1970s and earlier. So according to uh, official main mainstream uh, documentation, environmental uh, experimentation and cloud seeding, weather modification, in other words, started uh, in earnest just after World War II. So 1946, 1947, uh, military scientists using B-17 bombers, they would take crushed dry ice and they would drop it over these super cooled clouds to see what would happen. So they took crushed dry ice and they released it at about a rate of one kilogram per kilometer. So that's about two pounds per half mile, you know, just approximately. And what would happen is these tiny pebbles of dry ice, which are very cold, you know, colder than negative 40 degrees Celsius, um, they will drop through the atmosphere and it'll create some super cooled air. And they call it basically a freeze box. Inside this freeze box, the cloud moisture and condensation, it will turn into ice crystals. So inside this, this solid mass of air that's created this freeze box, the ice crystals will fall to the bottom. So this dry ice could cut huge uh, rectangular slabs out of stratus clouds. And so um, you could see after an hour what would form. These uh, tracks would be a mile and a half wide and for however long that they, they were able to spray the dry ice. So I want you to see from the online Britannica that I'm not just making this stuff. They define uh, weather modification as the deliberate or the inadvertent alternation of atmospheric conditions by human activity sufficient to modify the weather on local or regional scales. So just like that dry ice was being released from airplanes in World War II, silver iodide and lead iodide can also be released from airplanes. They can be generated on the ground and an ion trail can go up into the atmosphere and then you can uh, get it into the atmosphere that way or it can be, uh, it can be released from airplanes or um, rockets other propellants or munitions, um, but um, I think the way they're doing it primarily is through airplanes. So let's take a look at some of the, the documents um, on this. So you learn some crazy stuff as you study this. Um, if you're going to do a project on weather modification, that's perfectly okay apparently according to our federal government. You just have to notify them and you have to fill out some forms with the NOAA, NOAA the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Yes, here it is, Public Law 92-205 um, passed in the 1970s, all non-federal weather modification activities must be reported to the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. Very interesting. Also expected from the requirement for reporting are religious activities or other ceremonies, rites and rituals intended to modify the weather. It even has religious rites, rituals and ceremonies that are intended to modify the weather. Have you ever heard of a rain dance? I, I don't know, <laughs> I'd have to find this report, but I think that would be hilarious to find a report to the U.S. government of a rain dance from some Indian tribe, <laughs> but it literally says it. That's the language in there. Uh, let's take a look at these forms. Um, you know, it's it's got the dates on there. It's got times, what methods you're going to use for weather modification. Um, what are your numbers, your data, and what are your results? And you submit this to the NOAA, and then it's the responsibility of the NOAA to submit these forms to the Secretary of Commerce of the United States. And uh, from there, um, they issue, they compile the information and issue it to reports to the United States Congress. And so our government is doing weather modification and there are, um, um, to my knowledge, private and public uh, entities that are doing this weather modification and they submit these reports. And uh, due to freedom of information, um, these are all available. So you can actually look um, at, at these reports. Now, I don't doubt that there's uh, military ones that are secret going on as well. <clears throat> but there are a number of reports you can check out. <clears throat> Look at these forms, the years, the dates, the methods and so forth. It has all the information. You can go check it out. And then, you know, we hear about things like the Beijing Olympics where they were getting rid of the rain and the fog around that area. And around airports, they do things where they get rid of fog. There could be a number of interesting, uh, useful purposes for weather modification. Um, but the US military also said they wanted to control the weather by 2025. So keep that in mind. So it's gonna be an intro today, just a part one, a short one, but I want you to see 
that this is no longer in the realm of conspiracy theory. We have government documents. We have a long history of weather modification, and uh, we're just we're just in the 19 up to the 1960s right now. So um, this is going to be a part one, but we're going to see where it's gone from here and uh, what they're doing that they admit they're doing and what may uh, be possible that they're not telling us. But keep those eyes on the skies. There's a lot going on above our heads. Um, so open your eyes, look around, think about what you're seeing and what's happening around you.